Well, happy holidays, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another edition of One on One. It's been a while since I've done an episode of One on One. Generally speaking, I have dozens of comics to share with you. That's not the case. Uh, I haven't received a box in the last week and a half, and I attribute that to it being the holiday season. I'm not even sure what CGC's hours are down in Sarasota. Uh, I kind of looked at my submissions today, and I didn't see too much movement. Um, so anyhow, yeah, I have a lot of books to come back. Uh, including that really nice copy of uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one, which I posted. And if you haven't let me know what you think the grade is, go on over to my Instagram page, over to the or, or over to the Facebook our Facebook page, and let us know what grade you think it is. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to come back at two, two point five, but let's see what you think. I'm getting some really higher, much higher grades, much lower grades. I'm curious to know which grade you think that ASM number one is going to come back at. Again, you can find that over on my Instagram page. Or on my Facebook page. Guys, I sure hope you've had a great uh, holiday uh, so far. Christmas being yesterday. Uh, I noticed Sam said he's still digesting his food. I was too. And then we had another family gathering today. And I just added on to that. I had a hard time sleeping last night. Because my gut was so full of turkey and ham and all the other good stuff. My sister put on a great spread yesterday. And my mom did the same thing today. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty full. I'm pretty full. And I'm sure I packed on the weight. So now, just in time for our New Year's resolution to lose 30, 40 pounds. Like, I sure could do that. Now, guys, again, no, no comics to unbox today, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the current CGC scandal, which has been going on. I'm sure you all know about it. If you don't know about it, I'm going to talk about it right now. I'll give you a brief rundown of exactly what's happening and my thoughts on it. Uh, a lot of guys asking, Kevin, are you going to go to CBCS? And I'll answer that question in just a moment. Uh, and then I'm going to later on in the show, and you know, it's not going to be a very long episode, but later on in the show, I'm going to talk to you about the top, I'm going to show you the top 10 books I've seen this year, uh, at the shop coming in for pressing, cleaning, and grading. If you guys follow my unboxings, I'm sure you know, you're going to recognize a lot of these books because we've been seeing them a lot this year. These are the top 10. I got a few big ones and a few, few lighter keys that we can look at. So anyways, guys, let's talk about first. Oh, and by the way, if you're, if you're new here, welcome. Um, at the channel, we talk about everything comic book related. Uh, I usually do unboxings at this time every Tuesday. So if you like comic book news, comic talk, comic book talk, this is the place for you. I sure hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And by doing so, you can also join in our live chat, which is going on right now. And I'll go over to the chat room in a few moments and see who's here and say hi to everybody. And if you are new and you feel like saying hi, please do so. And let me know where you're, where you're watching from. I love to see where everybody is tuning in from. Okay. The big CGC scandal. Guys, what's going on? So basically, I don't know the names of all the people that are, are, are involved in this. I mean, the, the culprit um, or even the people that have discovered it. But I did uh, I did uh, see a few uh, YouTube videos on it. And essentially what's happening is this. There is a, there's, a, there's a dude in the States who I believe has a pretty big eBay presence. And what he was doing was he was taking uh, qualified books or even just regular books and then adding um, uh, adding to the book. In, 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 the, in one case, and you saw from my thumbnail, it was an Amazing Spider-Man 252, newsstand copy. What he was doing was he took the newsstand copy out and he added uh, Mark's Jeweler insert, resubmitted it. The book came back with a Mark's Jeweler uh, tab and the book is worth crazy money, but the book was not actually a Mark Jeweler's book. Uh, a lot of guys, once they saw that, started doing some research and started doing some investig investigating, looking at past auctions, comparing books. A lot of, a lot of great detective work by a lot of amazing uh, enthusiasts out there. Um, and uh, I think Automatic Comics was the other guy I was watching. He was, he was uh, showing some of his research. He noticed a qualified copy of Hulk 181. The book was... Had so, was a book looking just like the qualified book showed up uh, in a different slab with a different certification number. And yeah, so a lot of, a lot of fraud going on, guys. A lot of guys playing with CGC's, um, I guess you could say, uh, chinks in their armor, some of their weaknesses. Uh, as you all know, CGC allows people to send their books in to be re-slabbed. 
You know very well that when I get books back from CGC that happen to be cracked or damaged in transit, I send back and they'll re-slab that for me. But oftentimes I'll have clients just give me one of their own books. Here's a mechanical air book right here that just came back. But um, a lot of clients will give me books they want to submit back because the, 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 the slab is old or they want a custom label or there's a crack or it's been damaged. And, and I do that. And that's a the service they offer. But unfortunately, what's happening is CGC is not checking the inside of the book and they're not they're not thoroughly examining the book and what's happening there is is they're taking the book out of the slab and they're basically taking the inner well out and just putting it into a brand new slab and then you know setting it back now the problem with that is this so for example if i have a hulk 181 that's 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 a green label hulk 181 say it's a 9.2 a nice high uh grade copy and i have another 9.2 copy blue label what i could do if i was unscrupulous and a total jackass i could uh i guess i could carefully open up the slab take out the green label qualified copy meaning there's probably probably the the the, the, the value stamp is missing slip that inside of the other slab with the other nine two and ship it back to be re-slabbed i could be asking for a new label because they don't want a custom label or maybe the the, dam, the the slab is damaged somewhat. And what CGC is doing is they're just taking that and they're re-slabbing it and sending it back. In a way, they're laundering the book. They're laundering, that's not the right term to use really, but they're in a way they're laundering a book that is not the right book. Now, what about the other 9.2 that they that they took out? Well, they'll, they'll just send it back and get it re-slabbed again. It'll probably come back a 9 or a 9.2 or a 9.4. You see? So... Yeah, that's what's been going on. Lots of guys, again, you, taking advantage of some of the uh, services that CGC have in place and taking advantage of those and in turn taking advantage of you and of me and of other collectors that are buying books, trusting the label that we have in front of us. So it's a very, very unscrupulous thing to be doing. The one good thing is uh, they, I think they've kind of narrowed it down to one dude in particular that was doing this. I don't have his name. I don't have his username. You can find out if you do some more research here on YouTube, but there's one culprit in particular that was, that's been doing this, but he's been doing it for like, I think 10 years. So yes, there are a lot of slabs out there that have been, um, affected by this. Now, am I surprised this is happening? No. Do I think this guy is the only guy that's ever done this? No. You know as well as I, guys. Look, it. It's Christmas. My daughter just told me today, Dad. There's this little, this little, this little donut place here in town. They make the best donuts. It's called Crave Donuts. Look them up on Instagram. Crave Donuts. Some jackass broke into their brand new shop on Christmas, early in the Christmas morning. Smashed their glass window. Went in, stole equipment, stole whatever from a donut shop. But this is a young, this, this is a, a young fledgling company, you know, that's trying to make good, work hard, and then some. I don't want to use bad words here, but some jerk comes in there and, and, and ruins it. So look, you're always going to have these desperate people that don't want to work hard for, for stuff. They want to take it from the rest of us and take advantage of the rest of us. So am I surprised this is happening? No, you're going to find these types of people, these leeches, these scumbags in all, in every, in every, everywhere, <laughs> in all walks of life, you're going to find these pieces of garbage. These human pieces of garbage that are out there. So am I surprised it's happening? No, I'm not. I also think it's been happening for much longer. I think, well, I should say much longer. I should say by a lot of people. So I don't I don't think it's just one person. The next question is why is it happening? Because they found a weakness, right? They found an in. They they discovered that CGC is not are not checking the books when they go back to be re-slabbed, right? I do send books back. I'm sure many of you have given me books to send back to CGC. I send them back. Do you think that CGC is opening up the inner well? The only time they're going to open up an inner well is if the inner well is damaged or if the, it belong, it's an old style inner well. Other than that, they'll probably just use the existing inner well and just re-slab it and send it back to me. Now that's on CGC and I guarantee they're going to do something about that now. I'm going to talk about that in a few moments. But um, that's why it's happening. They found a weakness in CGC's armor, and they took advantage of it, and they've been doing that for the last, 
uh, God knows this guy. This guy's been doing it for a very, very long time. And again, let's be honest, guys. It's been happening a long time before that. Um, you know, it goes back to guys selling raw books, promising you it's not had. They have not. They have no color touch or no restoration. When they they full know it has had color touch or restoration. I've I've encountered these people. I've dealt with these people. I don't know why they they habitually want to lie to their clients and sell them a bum deal, but they do. I I. I don't know why people do that. I can't speak to that. All I know is that it's unethical and it's really disheartening and it's scary, isn't it? It's very scary. Let me go. And I see the chat rooms kind of going crazy. I'm going to go over there really quick right now. Um, so everyone, everyone who said happy holidays, right back at you. Happy holidays to you too. So I'm just going to skip over all that. Um, 9.9 in the house. How you doing? 9.9 news, Stan? Thanks, 9.9. Yeah. Adams here, how you doing? Why can't they do something like micro dot on the book itself? We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> do I think CGC is publicly, publicly going to address this? They're going to have to. They have to publicly address it. I'm sure they're trying to figure out what they're going to say or how they're going to approach this. Um, I guess I could talk about that now. How are they going to react? Because they're going to obviously change the way uh, reslabbing works. Um, maybe they're going to, um, uh, open up every single book, especially high value books and, uh, determine whether or not the book is as it's supposed to be. Uh, what I don't like about this, if they're going to open up the slabs, my open up the inner wells, my friends, you know, it's going to be take more time. And if something takes more time, it's going to be more costly. So that this could increase the, ch- the charge they, they give us on reslabbing. Maybe they'll stop reslabbing altogether. I don't know. They could just say, nope, no reslabbing. If the book's got to, if you want a new slab, the book has to be, the book has to be regraded. That could be an option as well too. That would fix the problem. It would suck, but it would fix the problem. Um, maybe they could say, you know what, if you want to reslab your, if you want to have your book regraded, maybe we'll give you a discount because the book's already graded. We will upgrade it to a new, to a new, our new slab. We will regrade the book and maybe we'll give you a discount on that. Maybe they'll do something, something like that. But then there's that risk. The book, the, the, the grade could go down. The grade could go up. So, yeah. Um, hi, Dave. How's it going? Um, Arnold says, what I'm concerned about is Chinese manufacturers sell CGC cases. They've been selling these CGC cases for a long time. It's pretty easy to, it's pretty easy to, 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 to see a, a fake. I've seen them. They're pretty, they're pretty obvious, Arnold. Um, we can trace back to 2011 as of now, um, more details emerging. Yeah. So look, at th- this has gotten the, the hobby up in arms. People are really freaking out and everybody's investigating, especially if they've had dealings with this person who's been selling these books. Um, but I hope criminal charges are brought against this piece of garbage. Uh, I don't know how people are going to prove, well, I guess they, there's, there's, there's gotta be tra- you could trace it through the eBay sales or through, through auction sales. But yeah, what a piece of garbage. Um, Merry Christmas from Alaska. Jim Alaska, how you doing, buddy? Thank you. Uh, Bad Arbor, is your Boxing Day sale this Saturday? What time are you open? Yes, well, I guess I could talk about that now. Yes, Boxing Day sale. If you're local, if you're local, come on by the shop on Saturday, this Saturday, the 25th or 6th? 30th oh my gosh the 30th duh today's the 26th uh september september my gosh it is late december the 30th at my shop this saturday uh, 11 till 4 we have the shop upstairs and my shop we have up to 50 percent off a variety of items i'm going to be restocking the dollar bin so i know you guys like those dollar bins come on down and i'll have 50 percent off or some big price off of uh other books too so and others most everything will be on sale in some way shape or form but uh, I am going to be going there tomorrow and stocking some of the shelves up. So come on down. Um, thanks, GTA lady. Appreciate it. Dave House, they need to release the serial numbers so the public for this guy reholders. The community must be a part of the solution as it's also part of uncovering all this. Well, I think that's what's happening and I think this is what's going to happen. CGC is going to have to come out, make a public statement about this, and they're going to have to... Um, Address it. They have to address it. We have found there's a weakness here in the way we do things. People are taking advantage of this weakness. And because of that, we have to make a change. 
I just don't like when change costs us all more money. You all know as well as I do how expensive grading is already. So if they start making changes, ugh, they're gonna that that's just gonna trickle down to you and I. Um, Lord Tanum's here, starting to miss the old days before CGC. Hey, you still can buy books. You don't have to go and buy books that are graded. Um, you can buy raw books, but I know what you're saying. It's almost like you buy the book and you crack it. You know. Uh, but yeah, every time I crack a Hulk 181, whether it's a lower grade book or or an, or a, a newer a newer or freshly graded book, I'm always very nervous that maybe someone missed that the uh, the the the, uh, the cut the 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 Marvel value stamp's gone. I'm always nervous about that, right? So yeah, anyway, something to think about. I wonder what kind of criminal charges they could bring up him up on. Would it be well theft in a way, right? He, there he he's theft. I'm not sure. Well, the next question people always have for me is, um, will you stay with CGC, Mr. Paul Dano? Comic Doctor, are you going to leave CGC and go to CBCS? The answer to that is no. No bloody way. Because no matter this, like someone wrote just now, this too shall pass. I also think this too shall pass. We will get to the bottom of this. There'll be ram this, the ramifications of this will follow our hobby for several years because these these um, tarnished slabs we'll call them tarnished slabs are out there. Some that we don't even know about. We know about this guy who has done this, but there are other guys guaranteed. There are other guys that have done this. So don't you know that that's the scary thing. Um, but will I go back to, will I go to CBCS? No way in hell. Because I'll tell you, in the 12 years, 13 years I've used CGC, they've never sent my books to the wrong place. I was with CBCS for less than a year and they sent my package, client packages to the wrong address twice. Oh, they're different now, Kevin. Are they? Great. I don't care. I, I will not go to CBCS. I don't care. And I'm not crazy about their new labels either, by the way. Their new labels don't look all that great. I still, they, I still think they got it wrong. Um... I will stick with CGC. No matter how how much irritation CGC causes me, because they do, and you all know about that, I will still stick with them for now. That's where I'm hanging my hat, and I'll continue to hang my hat. Now, if something comes up that's that's mind blowing or crazy, then I and I and I have to rethink that. I'm not listen. I'm not saying I never will send ever send to CBCS, but as right as of right now, I'm still not going to. I I have one headache, which is CGC, and I'll stick with that headache. The headache I know is better than the headache I don't know. I know how to treat it a little bit, I guess you could say. Um, bad ombre, yeah, fraud indeed. Um, I think it'd be easy to think that the whole hobby has been corrupted. I think these are isolated cases and shouldn't be overblown. I, you look, yeah, I, I think the majority of slabs that are out there are fine. The majority of slabs that you have are probably just fine. In regards to you know how many slabs are out there in circulation right now, right? I would say the majority are fine, but there are going to be some that have been that have been compromised. You got to understand that. And if you're out to buy a five thousand dollar, a three thousand dollar, even a thousand dollar book or a ten thousand, you're always going to have that. Well, when was this graded? When was when was this looked at? Because that that is a concern. It's a, it's a legitimate concern. And if you are going to buy a big book, maybe you want to once you bought the book, maybe you want to crack it. And make sure the book is what it is. Yeah, that, that's something you got to think about. A uh, scamming has always been going on. Timing, excuse me, trimming, color touch. People trying to sell treasury size edition reprints of first Batman and first Superman, counterfeit copies of Turtles and Cerebus, for example. And it's never going to end, guys. This is just you know again a chink in the armor. This jackass took advantage of it. Has made some quick bucks on it, and and now it's it's put us all up, you know, put us all, all on red alert. Agrees with ju a just price. Sadly, they'll have to put some time between them acknowledging the errors and the price adjustment. Charging factor is too high. Um, I would think. Well, they put the prices up last May, and they put up the, the May before that. So, guys, May's around the corner. Are we going to get another price hike again this year? I was hoping not, but this this could ca cause that. Which would really suck. Um, Tarnished Lab, Pedigree. <laughs> yeah, really. Going to watch Godzilla on Saturday. Guys, it seems like a great movie. No wokeness. Godzilla. Well, I don't, want to get, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but Godzilla Minus One is a pretty darn good movie, guys. If you don't mind subtitles, would you get used to it pretty good? It's a pretty damn good flick. Go check it out. I really did enjoy it. Jack and I really enjoyed it. 
Hey, Lord Thoth, how you doing? Good to see you. My trusty moderator is here. My peace of mind, Michael says, is the slab books I bought are too insignificant to have been scammed. Well, again, again, if you're, if you're sitting on a book that's a $500 book or a $300 book, is someone going to go through the trouble of doing that? But it's those big books, you know? It's like, it's like uh, again, a book that has... Uh, you know, a Mark's jeweler insert in it, you know, that, that's a, that, that changes a book, you know, that makes the book's value significantly more on a modern book. Or again, another big one would be the Hulk 181 with the, with the Marvel value stamp. And before this even happened, before this whole scandal even happened, I heard of people, not people, but I've heard, you know, I've heard others say that they've heard, I've heard that someone once had a graded book, they opened it up and it was actually the Marvel value stamp was not there. So, you know, I've heard that before. That's very scary. It is the case. Bruhaha. CGC has to address it, but they also have to fix it. 9.9. .9, good job on exposing the enemy. Now we are aware. Listen, it, it's it's um how will CGC uh uh respond to this? Well, how can they fix the problem? Well, you want to join me next Tuesday at 8.30. I'll be on here with Moneyball Comics. I'm going to do a... I'm finally getting to an, uh, to have someone join me on here. So next Tuesday, mark it on your calendars. Uh, Moneyball Comics is going to be here, and we're going to talk about just that. How can CGC fix this problem? There was a suggestion earlier here. Um, someone mentioned someone putting a micro dot or some kind of micro dot on the comic itself. I brought that up with Charlo. I said, could they do some kind of like, you know, uh, invisible ink or some kind of a, he's like, they're not going to ever, they're not going to put that on a book. And he's right. They're not going to, you're not going to add something to a book, but there are things you could do to the inner well, but we'll talk about that next week. I have some ideas on how they could go forward. Listen, one of the, one of the quickest and easiest ways is you can't re-slab your book. Once a book goes back, it has to be regraded. That's the, um, that's the uh, only option i think they have or maybe on books that are over you know five hundred dollars or over one thousand dollars those are the books they're going to say if your book is well right now if you've got a high value book at cgc that i think is more than three thousand dollars you can't regrade it or you can't re-slab it it has to be regraded i believe and that makes you wonder why that, that why why they were able to re-slab that um that that marks jeweler because that that's a big book Unless they marked that it wasn't valued at that. But I think if a book is over a thousand or over three thousand, I have to check that maybe one of you can go check that right now at the CGC website. I believe if a book is over a certain amount of money, you cannot re slab the book. It has to be regraded no matter what. But perhaps that's got to be taken a little more seriously and books need to be just regraded when they're sent in. If the, if the slab is cracked, got to regrade the book. It sucks, but maybe that's what we have to do. Maybe that's what we have to do. All right, guys. Well, anyways. That's my thoughts on it, guys. Am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised when anything like this happens in any industry. You know, whenever there is, uh, an, uh, when something can be taken advantage of by a crook, the crooks will find it and they will get in and they will F everything up for the rest of us, right? Um, you know, it's a matter of time. It's like, I think of water. You know, someone told me when, when you when you have a foundation on your house, if you've got one crack in that foundation, water will find its way in. You may have a big, giant mansion, but if you've got one small crack in your foundation, the water will eventually find that crack and seep its way in and start disintegrating your foundation. You're right? There's the same thing with this. There was a crack, I, I said a chink in the armor over at CGC and the way they're doing things. And this person took advantage of that and in doing so, made a bit of money for himself and has really hurt a lot of probably good, hardworking people. And that, that really bothers me because that's one thing I don't ever like to see is people get ripped off. It drives me frigging crazy. And uh, I don't want to, again, I don't want to go on a tangent of what I would do to this person or what should happen to this person or what I like to see happen to this person because I get very angry about this. I, 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 I work really hard. I know a lot of you guys work hard for your bucks and to have some a-hole come along and take advantage of, of, of you and is, is, is it's, it's, it's theft, right? It's it's awful. So that's how I feel. Um, and uh, no, I will not go to CBCS. I'll stick with CGC for a bit longer. <laughs> and uh, again, we will. I'm sure we hear from CGC within the next week or so. I hope sooner rather than later. They they shouldn't hold off too long because this is everywhere. They know it's everywhere. Maybe they'll wait till early next week after Christmas after the Christmas holidays to announce something. 
And I would not be a bit surprised if we see a change to some of their submission offerings because of this in regards to re-slabbing. Okay, enough of that. We'll talk more about that next week, though, guys. Again, if you're around next Tuesday at 8.30, uh, come on by. I think it's Tuesday, right? The second, or I think it's the second. Come on by and join me in Moneyball Comics as we talk about potential solutions to CGC's current problem. All right, let's quickly talk now about, because, you know, it's just kind of fun to see. What are some of the big books, little big and small books that we saw in 2023? These are books that I saw more of this year. Now, I don't have statistical data to provide for you. These are just books that we saw a heck of a lot of in 2023. Now, keep in mind, some of these books we saw earlier in the year, and they kind of dwindled off as the year progressed. Others were consistently in the shop a lot all year. So we'll go through some of the, I guess, lower, lesser valued ones first. The first one we saw a lot of, and let me know if you have these books. I'm sure a lot of you already have these books in your collection already. Come on, guys. Marvel Superhero Secret War number eight. My God, how many custom labels did I give out of this book this year? Tons. Tons. Now, we had Canadian price variants. We've had just the normal newsstand copies. Sorry, the newsstand copies and the normal direct copies. But whatever whatever copy there are out there, I saw a ton of these this year. An absolute ton of them. Um, Yes, now we have uh, Omega Man. Uh, Omega Man number Omega Man number three. The first Lobo. When James Gunn jumped over to DC and became the CEO of the CEO of the DCEU um, with Saffron, um, a lot of people thought, "Hey, you know what? Momoa's gonna." Everyone was talking about Jason Momoa playing Lobo, and that was a big thing. And all of a sudden, now this book is a book I see all the time at the shop, but this year it started tweaking and trending up again. Um, we started. I started seeing Omega Men 3 popping up a lot more frequently. And again, I'm sure it was because of all that talk of James Gunn taking over over at DCEU and potentially uh, you know, introducing Lobo. And a lot of people talking about Momoa taking that role. I think even Momoa said, well, look, again, I, again this could be all hearsay and people just saying, but there's talk that he is actually really keen on, uh, on doing that as well. Um, you know, these are all mixed up. You're going to get some big ones and some little ones here. What, what's the next one I've got on here? No. Oh. Now, this book, another one, similar to the last two, I saw, I've been seeing this book for years. But this year, oh my Lord. Uh, I can't even fathom how many copies of Wolverine number one I sent in this year. Uh, a lot. I think almost every unboxing has at least a few of these Wolverine number ones. So, yeah, we saw a lot of those this year. Uh, you know, again, with this was, is still an affordable key. Um, you know, you could have picked this book up two or three years ago for a song. Now, I think at a 9.8, the book still holds strong at around three four $400. So still an affordable Wolverine number one, a first issue. Uh, first appearance of Patch, and of course, Wolverine being brought into the Deadpool universe, uh, and then eventually the Deadpool universe potentially being a part of the MCU, brings a lot of onus on this, and so this this copy of Wolverine 1 overtook the limited series Wolverine number 1, right? Uh, the Frank Miller one we see more frequently, and we saw a lot of those that this year as well, but this copy, this copy right here, wow, it, it, it took over big time. Let's go over the chat room really quick because a lot of you guys are, are, are still chatting up a storm over there. Um, James says, I think it would be easy to think that the whole hobby has been... Oh, we already said that. Okay. Um, um, oh, boy. What's going on here? I just jumped. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find where we left off. Bruja. Oh, we did that already. Okay. Uh, Lord, Lord Tatman's comics is pre-internet. We used to have to look at the books to determine if there was something wrong. Now, I just place an order and have the book in case delivered to me. Trust is an issue for sure. CGC has to maintain that trust. If they don't have that, forget it. I mean, look, we always know when you send your books off to CGC, when you send your books off anywhere, there's always potential for disaster, guys. It's any, any presser, not just me, any presser. Any 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 grading company, CBCS, CGC, PGX, whatever. Because the world's not perfect, right? 
Things go sideways. It can happen. But trust is important. You want to make sure the people that are handling your books are doing the very best to ensure your books are safe and they're arriving on time uh, where you said they're going to be and that everything's going tickety-boo. But again, at CGC, we want to, you know, that's a big thing. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about damage at CGC. I don't want, I don't want to go off on that tangent too. Books getting damaged while at CGC. I've, I've, I've seen it twice with two books I sent in. Uh, which is very aggravating, you know. Um, what's happening over there? I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what's happening over there. They wouldn't let me in. I went tried to go there last August. Again, I told you guys. They said, no, thanks, Kevin. We can't have you here. We don't want you in our facility because I'm just such a dangerous person. I run a risk. I don't know what the issue was, but they, 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 they had proprietary equipment I could not see. So they did not let me in there, you know. I never understood that. Why would you not want one of your partners, me, or any of the other dealers that do work with you guys, why would you not want us at your facility to see how you guys operate things? So we can come back and inform our clients as to how things are done. Why are you, what are you afraid of showing us? Is it that much of a, a shit show there? You don't want people to see it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. That's a whole other conversation for another time. Merry Christmas, Lord Thoth. Rock City says, I guess someone didn't like my suggestion of a few drops of super glue between the label and case. Um, yeah, you could affix it to the case itself. That if you if you try to separate, well, yeah, if you somehow adhere the, the inner well to the slab, then yeah, if you try to take it apart, you could damage it. Yeah, there, something like that may work, right? Sure. Could CGC attach a label to the inner sleeve itself so you can't just remove it? Well, yeah. They used to have it so that if you tried to take the, in the old days, the old the old way they'd done it, and the way that, I guess, PGX does it. Is it PGX does it that way, I think? They actually encase the inner, they actually um, seal the label. Somehow that if you try to, to take it apart, the label will rip. or you know They need something like that where the label is destroyed if you try to open it. Something like that they should, they should need to come up with. Um, hi Brad, how you doing? Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, do you see this significantly affecting the market? And many thanks for giving live and talking about this. Doctor Process, no problem. Do I think? Um, no, I don't think it'll affect the market as a whole. Again, I think for big books like like at Hulk One Eighty Ones or or any of these these kind of books that have special inserts or special whatever. Yeah, I think that may make certain buyers very trepidatious about moving forward with these books because you know the book might not be the book. That's the sad thing, right? Um, I don't I don't know what to say. I, I don't know how they're going to deal with that. They're going to have to figure something out. Because, yeah, unless the book has been... I'm sure this, they're going to solve some... They're going to come up with something. Maybe that's why everything's kind of froze at my, at my with my books right now. Everything's kind of in limbo right now. I've got a couple of James's magazines are there. A couple of my books have been sitting there for a long time. That moved, especially the last couple of weeks, things have really slowed down. I would not be surprised if they're trying to figure something out. But again, we have not heard from them, so I don't know. But I, do I think it's going to affect the hobby as a whole? No, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think so. Because I don't think it affects millions and millions of books, right? I think it affects hundreds and hundreds of books, though. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. I think. Bruja says, put a color-changing seal. When the case is cracked, it changes color. Something like that. Something like that. Will you come up with ideas? I'd love to hear some of your ideas. How do you think CGC could fix this problem? Like, practically fix this problem? I'll read through your the comments and maybe I'll bring it up on next week's show if I like your idea. Because I've got some ideas rolling around in my head too. Um, I, I think the simplest way is to somehow have some kind of um, QR code embedded into the inner sleeve so that the QR code is, is attached to that book. Because once the book is in the inner sleeve, I, I wish I could take one out and show you right now, but once the inner, the book, the book inside the slab is sealed inside of an inner sleeve. And what I'll, maybe what I'll do at the shop tomorrow, I'll bring one of the sleeves home for next week. And I'll show you all what I mean. But once the book is in there, maybe have something on the inside of the sleeve that can't be taken out or can't be um, uh, played with. Something like that. Even if it's a QR code or even a serial number, whatever. 
the or the, or the certification number. Actually, it's not a bad like like they do with VIN car VIN numbers on cars, right? Um, there's, there's one on the door and there's one on the, on the, on, by the, by the windshield. So if you've got a certification number on your label, that cert label must match the cert that's printed on the inside of the inner well. That's ah, going to cost more money, right? It's going to cost more money to create something that will do that, but that would work, right? That will keep the books together at all time. You know that the cert must match. Um, mail fraud is serious. Damn right. Lord Saw says, there are always criminals at every level, unfortunately. Signpost. But how does CGC uh, so readily admit they missed the Mark Jeweler insert? The original book is graded by multiple CGC professionals. Um, now, it was my understanding that the, the, the Mark Jeweler's insert was, was it not added to the book? That's what I had thought. Did I get that wrong? I still love high grade. L I still love high grade loose for my personal collection. I'm not sure what that means. Peter G's here. In my opinion, the, the issues collectors have with CGC is their lack of transparency. Well, that's what I said, man. I, I, I love, I love telling people how I do things. I mean, not all my little secrets to how I press and clean comics. Is I do things a little different than others. Like I see how people are doing the books. We, they're all very the principles all the same. Don't get me wrong. But we do things slightly different at the comic doctor's office. I'm being honest. Um, so the materials we use, it's nothing major, but it's something we prefer, right? We tweak it to our own liking. But generally speaking, when people come over, I want to show them around. I don't mind showing them this facility. I don't mind showing them how we, do, you know, if I got time, that is. I don't mind showing them around, talking to them. Why would you not want your clients to see what your operation is, how your operation works? You know, I, I when we were kids, I'm sure you were, when you guys were kids, you, your school used to take us on field trips to, to factories, to General Motors or to the hospital to see, you know, how the, uh, the you know, the, I remember going to the hospital once to see how there was that area in the hospital where they would do like, uh, put casts on and they'd show us how to do that. They'd expose us to that. It was kind of cool. Uh, General Motors would take us on tours as well too, right? Why would you not want us to see that? I, I don't understand that. Uh, Michael, this is Mega Man 3, really? It isn't that valuable. No, it's not that valuable, but it is, um, it's a big book now because everyone's speculating. Everyone's spe Let's get back to it, guys. Let's get back to some of the other ones. Okay, so another one, we I saw a lot of this book earlier in the year, like in January, February, March, and April. Something is Killing the Children. Huge book. Still see the book coming in, but I was seeing like tons of this book earlier, actually towards the tail end of 2022 into 2023. This was a book we saw a lot of, not so much anymore, but that was a big book I was seeing quite a bit of. Let me see what else we have here. Um, uh, where'd my slideshow go? There it is. Okay, let's see what other ones. Okay, so a big book. Uh, out of some of the big books, this is one. Two big Marvel keys that I saw a lot of this year. X-Men number one was one of them. I saw a lot of this book this year. Uh, more so than other other years. X-Men number one um, was coming in quite... I think I had four or five of them earlier on in the year at one time. And uh, it seems like almost on a monthly basis I get an X-Men number one in. Let's see what other one I have here. Uh, Hulk 181. Guys, you've seen this a lot. Sometimes I'll have two or three of them in a box. That's how common this book is. And that's how and people love the book. Now, why am I seeing why am I seeing a lot of something that's killing the children? Why am I seeing a lot of um, Hulk 181s? Why am I seeing a lot of X-Men number ones? Guys, I did a video about this. <laughs> Whether you want to admit it or not, Hollywood has a dramatic effect on what books people are buying and how they're speculating for the books even though things are kind of quiet in tinseltown right now people are still anticipating the the uh the uh, the coming of wolverine hugh jackman coming back as wolverine people are anticipating i think something that something that's coming to children may have been there was a, there was some talk movie talk of that or perhaps a series and so X-Men, of course, going now, now being pushed to the forefront of the MCU. And they actually just announced that, yeah, moving forward in the MCU, it's they're going to start really focusing heavily on the X-Men and the Avengers are going to take a back seat, which is what they should have done. They should have just taken a break 
after Endgame and just waited for all the rights and stuff to totally come to back to Marvel and then just started doing them the X-Men at that point. But no, they didn't. They they but but anyways, long story short, they're moving in now into X-Men. That's why we're seeing these books. That's why we're seeing, you know, X-Men number one. So the, oh, these are all speculation. Don't get me wrong. These are these are not just speculation. These are key books. X-Men number one, Hulk, you know, 181. But they're speculation books too. The popularity of these characters are going to increase when they be, when the movies are, come out through through Disney. Uh, there you go, Booster Gold again. Uh, this one was really hot in and around the time Blue Beetle came out in the summertime. <clears throat> I was getting a lot of this book again towards the end of last year into this year. Everyone's speculating that you know with when you saw. Um, Blue Beetle, you were going to get a Booster Gold appearance. And then again, once uh, James Saffron and, or sorry, James Gunn, what's what's Saffron's first name? Is it David Saffron? I forget. The other CEO over there. Everyone knows that James Gunn has a a propensity to to use oddball characters and to play around with oddball characters. And Booster Gold being one of those comedic, goofy characters, people are really thinking uh, this is a character we're going to see very, very soon. On the big screen. And yeah, this book comes in very regularly and still does come in very regularly. Not a super huge value book like Omega Men 3. <clears throat> Speculation, my friend. Speculation. What else? Hulk 340. Another big book. There was a lot of these of these modern books I could have put here. Uh, but this one is one I saw quite frequently this year. Um, uh, Hulk 340. Tom McFarlane cover. Uh, just another modern book that I saw a lot of. Uh, over and over and over and over again. It, it's just a very popular cover. And um, being a Tom McFarlane uh, art cover too, people are really hip on this one. That's what we saw anymore. We saw a lot of ASM 300s, so did we not? Again, just like um, the Wolverine number ones, tons of these uh, ASM 300s. Sometimes I have a box with four or five of them in there. Um we, and luckily, we had a few nine eights come back this year too. Quite a few nine eights, which is great because for this is one book that it's tough to get a nine eight in. But happy to see uh, a lot of decent grades on this one. Yes, and is that it? Is there one more? Oh yeah, the last big one, Daredevil number one. Saw tons of this one as well too. Be again, reason being, it's it's one of the Marvel keys from the Silver Age that is still attainable that is still affordable well maybe not so much anymore but it was for a long time the last the last one right the one that people could could still grab uh and not break the bank so a lot of people picked this book up and then of course again we talk go back to kingpin and and uh and and, you know echo and that whole universe and daredevil making an appearance in that terrible she hulk show and Disney making comments about how they're going to reboot, you know, doing Daredevil Reborn and all that, which is on hiatus now. It's been kind of pushed back. But again, that speculation just drove a lot this book up as well too. And a lot of people were really interested in uh, in seeing that. So, well, there you go. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. So there you go. Those are a few of the books that we saw quite frequently here at the Comic Doctor's office and during many of our unboxing <clears throat> showcases here uh, i'll go back to the chat room really quick i'll answer any questions you might have and then i'll let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your evening um mike lemon says unless you have a 9.8 omega man 3 is it is at a reasonable price not worth getting slabby a nine you want a 9.8 on omega man 3 of course uh otherwise the value just drops Yeah, it's still it's still one of those characters that people are really looking forward to seeing done on the big screen and being a bit of an oddball character, uh, something that James Gunn may some a character that James Gunn may investigate. I still think he's going to play around with with the medieval world with demon and all that. I, I think we're going to see that. I hope so. I get about four copies of that. But anyways. Um, Brad says, I'm talking heavy lighting and dunking in water just blows. I'm talking heavy dun- lighting and dunking in water just blows my mind. Okay. Brad, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm t- are you talking about using like B LEDs and things? Are we, is that what we're talking about now? I'm not sure. Uh, the real, the first Nightwing's a good book. I, I saw it a few times, but it wasn't as consistent as the ones I showed. Hey, Kevin, you beat the T. Te- no, okay. So Brad's asking, will I beat the Toronto Comic Book Show tomorrow? No, I will not. Um, it's, I was just so, guys, I am just beat. 
to be honest. And I'm not feeling all that great, actually. I'm fighting something. And aside from that, I still got family stuff going on tomorrow. I always found the, the, the boxing day at the TC, um, the Toronto Comic Book Show, very, very hard to, to handle. I've done it for the last several years uh, to, my, to, to my family's dismay because it's always, I'm always away while they're doing something. So I decided this year to just pass. It sounds like it's going to be a great show. It's free admission too, by the way. So if you're in the Toronto area and you're bored tomorrow, you're not working, you still have the day off, head on over to the Toronto Comic Book Show. Tell them the comic doctor sent you. She's had a rob for me. And it might be a great show. So it probably will be a good show. So go and check it out. I know a lot of dealers that are going to be there. Paolo's going to be there, I know for sure. Mike's going to be there for sure. So a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of good comics to be had so get out there but i personally will not be at the show this year now that being said you may have seen an ad i just put out this week and this is gonna be the last of the sale i did a sale during black friday and i do uh, that week i'm doing a sale this week as well if you have books you want to submit or you're thinking of submitting go on to my website do the submission form as long as it's dated this week from now until this saturday it's 10% off all uh, pressing submissions, but I must receive the books within 30 days. I will not honor it if I get the books like in Jan- in, in, like in, in June or July, all right? I have to get the books within 30 days. So only do it if you're going to bring the books within thir- within a 30-day time period. It's hard to keep track of all that, and I don't want people yelling at me later. So that's how it's going to be. So 10% off all pressing submissions if, re- if the submission form is received before or by this Saturday. Again, the this, this shop this Saturday having a, a big sale upstairs and down. Uh, Charlo and Nippur picked up a 160 box collection from a store closeout. All moderns, all mint, and a lot of variant issues. If you're into moderns, not everybody's into modern, but some people really dig the modern stuff, the modern covers and all that. You want to come by the shop. They've got a lot of great books. I will be putting out a lot of 1970s and 80s. Fantastic Four, Captain America, uh, some other stuff too I've got. Um, and those are going to probably go in my half price bins. And I got a bunch of dollar books I'm going to drag out of here and take to the shop as well too. So lots of uh, new stuff at the shop this Saturday if you can make it. Um, Sam says, if no way I said three. <laughs> I, you know, Sam, I was waiting for you to say that. That's right. We did see Amazing Spider-Man 361s this year. Just not a whole hell of a lot compared to years past. Uh, 4337, Spidey 300, Hulk 81, X-Men 266. You got a few of them in there. You got a couple anyways. Thor 337, those are really, you know, prior to the Thor Love and Thunder, all those Beta Ray Bill books were, were coming in a lot. And 266, I do see that a lot. I do see, I, I probably could have put that one in this list as well too, Mike. Uh, Dave says, I'm sure the level of fraud here is less than 1%, but even still, we need to make sure when fraud is detected that the community is aware. Listen, I'm glad these guys are doing this. And it puts the onus on CGC to, to, to ramp up their security measures and how they're treating our books. I, I, I will do, a, I will do, a, a, I will do a, maybe do a video in a week or two. CGC in review and just talk about my experience with CGC over the course of the last year, the good and the bad. Um, you know, their their review, my review of them. Again, I'm not, they're not my partner. I'm not, in, you know, I'm not in bed with CGC. I work with CGC. That's all I do. So I, I have no reason why I can't review my experience with them. Um, I can tell you straight up, m- most every one of the, sub, the the customer service people I work with are fantastic at CGC. I've never had an issue in the last couple of years. Now, a few years ago, there was a couple of pretty snarky customer service reps, but this last year or two, they've been really, really nice. So that's something that I, I got to commend them for. But I'll do that on my on my video later on because I got lots to talk about when the, where CGC is concerned. Uh, Jive Turkey's embossed the corner of the inner well with the grade. Something like that. Exactly, Jive Turkey. Something like that's a good idea. It's not very expensive, but something has to happen to that inner well to make it connected to um, to make it connected to the certification number on this on the on the, on the label. Like I, I bought a couple of iPhones this year for my for my daughter and my wife. And there's a lot of fraud, as you know, a lot of uh, um, junk, you know, junky, uh, uh, 
what, what do you call them? They're fa fake iPhones out there. Um, and and they look pretty damn close. But if you know what you're looking for, you can see that there's uh, fraud going on there. You can see that, they, that they're doing it wrong. There, there are clues that indicate the, 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 the box is not correct or the, whatever. Um, but, but this is a lot easier, I think, of a problem to solve here with CGC. Having some kind of connection between the inner well and the certification number for sure and yeah even the certification they're being etched etched onto the slab as well all parts all parts of the slab should correlate the slab itself the inner well and the label should all have matching some kind of matching code so you know that if one of the codes is off it's been tampered with so, something like that's got to happen right and you know what? <clears throat> if they do that, someone's still going to try to screw us over. Someone's still going to try to rip us off. That's just the way it goes. But something, they have to make a change for sure. Um, Peter says, transparency, just not on this incident, but on their de determination of grading in general. Shout out to the 99 newsstand for pursuing these incidents. Yes, definitely. Does CDC care? Hmm. Oh, I, I, they're going to have to care. Lord thought they have to care. I mean, this this type of thing, while I don't think it's going to kill CGC, if they do not address it accordingly, quickly, promptly, and effectively, then people will start going elsewhere. I think this is the sort of thing that could um, move people over to the to the to the competition, right? Don't think there's not people that prefer CBCS because there are there are CBCS acolytes out there. I'm not saying they're not. This sort of thing could move people over. I just happen to know with CBCS, uh, I've dealt with them and I don't want to deal with them anymore. I uh, just, what they did to me was awful and I don't want to experience it anymore. Brad, C CGC should install alarms on every slab. Yeah. A UV QR code. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Brad says, how about an ink capsule once the seal is broke? Book destroyed. There you go. Destroy the book. If you can't have it, no one can have it. Um, Sam says, is it just me or did the problem start after they got bought out by the big that it should well again i think this was happening a long time ago but what's strange about it going back 11 years is that cgc did have different slabs 11 years ago so uh, they must have done something different right um signpost the submitter sent it back to cgc saying they missed to note the mark jeweler insert on the original submission cgc re-slabbed it with the mark jeweler note Without checking if the Mark Jeweler insert was in there, signpost. That makes no sense. Because if that that's just gross negligence, if that's the case, especially in a book that's value is like what what does it what does it go for? Ten grand almost. Canadian, Brad Koski. Remember that show? How things are made. Yeah, I love that show. Rock City. No, the Mark Jeweler's lower grade had a nine eight newsstand label swapped in, then submitted for a reholder. It was under the guise of getting a custom label, but oh, you forgot the MJ insert on the label. Okay, just a lot of a lot of sending it back. That those custom labels cause a lot of problems like this. This is because because with those custom labels, you can send back a perfectly good slab and say, you know what, I really want that that custom label, and that's reason enough for them to make the change, right? So that's not good. Tom McFarlane, great coverage. I agree. I'm surprised Wolverine 88 Deluxe Edition didn't make the cut. I, I didn't see a lot of them in the last few months. I saw, again, going back um, to, to, to like September of last year, I did see a lot. All of last year, there were tons. I had a few copies of my own. But in the last little while, I haven't seen a bunch. And again, a lot of other books could jump on this list as well, too. These are ones that I just that came, to, came to my mind really quickly of books I saw a lot of. But yeah, you know what? That 88 could easily have been on here as well. The crisis with the Chris Claremont signing coming up. Please let me know about sending the Giants X-Men and if it's a higher price. Got to take advantage of those Boxing Day sales. Um, the, the, the Giant Size X-Men you have with me right now. Dave, Dave, call me please tomorrow because I'll forget. Okay? Call me because I do have a stack of books that have to go for that signing. And by the way, if anybody does have books they want signed by Claremont and Austin, 
Uh, I will get the books clean, pressed, and sent to CGC in time for that signing, but I have to have the books in my hands by the 8th of January. The 8th of January, the books must be in my hands. If you are far away and you're going to send the books to me, do a submission form, pack your books up, and then on your box, make sure you put an S, a giant SS, so I know that that means signature series. The books are time sensitive. I'll pull them out and get them ready for the signature series event, okay? But Dave, please text me or call me tomorrow regarding that. I want to make sure uh, that does go. Excuse me. Jason says, suggestion to anyone that bought brought from that seller, send back the CGC for a regrade. Any issue like restoration or being qualified, CGC should be on the hook for if they gave it a blue label. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could. I mean, that, that's another thing too, guys. These guys, these thieves were taking advantage of CGC. CGC didn't catch it. So if you bought a book with the CGC you know, slab and the certification, and that book is not as CGC states it is, maybe there's some recourse there. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know, but maybe that's a reason. I mean, I know CGC has insurance. Maybe that's where you have to go to get your money if you've been ripped off. I hate to say it because, you know, is that gross negligence on their part? I, I think they're absolutely nuts not inspecting a book of that value personally. You know, if you've got a book that's 2000 3000 4000 plus dollars, you should be opening that book up and making sure it is what it is before you re-slab it and send it out because essentially you're just laundering that book. Right, which is not good. Um, Signpost says, it's always great show, Kev. Good deals to be had. Oh, totally. You talking about the Toronto Comic Book Show? Yeah, and, and right now, it's a buyer's market, my friend. Get over there and have some fun. Hey, Jerry the Jitterbug's here. Good evening. Just saw the live stream and wanted to stop by and say, hey, Jerry, good to see you. Thanks for popping by. Guys, if you want to check out a really interesting uh, uh, YouTube channel, check out Jerry the Jitterbug Comic Book Collector. Jerry is uh, an amazing conservator. He plays with all sorts of different books from different genres, step by step. Uh, sometimes the results are really uh, positive. Sometimes, well, you know, things happen. Right, Jerry? But, I mean, what an amazing channel. Go on over and check him out. Give him a follow and enjoy because I know we all love to watch Jerry the Jitterbug uh, over on his YouTube channel. Laura Thoughts is a great idea. A lot of great ideas, actually. Going to try to stop by on Saturday. Adam, fantastic. Your books are at CGC, I believe, Adam. John Sure was here. How you doing, John? How you doing? Bet Ombre, I'll be there Saturday. Drop off books, too, with my Black Friday form. Excellent. Look forward to seeing you, my friend. Custom made. Hey, Merry Christmas to you, too. Where have you been? Haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you had a great Christmas, you and the family. Jerry the Jitterbug says, for me, it's only CGC. Jerry, I'm with you. No matter how much pain and suffering... CGC has caused me personally <laughs> as a as a as a CGC authorized dealer whoopie doo. Uh yeah, I'll stick with them. I'll stick with them. Because again, CGC's now while CGC has screwed up shipping, they've not shipped my books to a wrong address. The only time they've screwed up the only time they've screwed up shipping is when they were supposed to ship a book to a client in the States and they ship it back to me. But at least the book's coming back to me, not going off to some rando somewhere. And that's what happened with CBCS. Uh, guess, who, guess who didn't sleep for two or three days when that was going on? And then the best part about CBCS is I I had to pay extra to have the book shipped back to me when they was their screw up. That See, that, that doesn't happen with CGC. You know, <sighs> but there's still problems. <laughs> inside John Short, inside job. Look at John makes a good point here too. Inside job. I'm sure CGC is investigating everything. They're taking all the information. They know who grades every book. Right? They know who grades every book. So, for example, this perpetrator, this thief, this piece of 
human garbage who's been doing this to collectors has been sending books to CGC under their account. Now, if, if CGC investigates and discovers that, hey, interestingly enough, every single book that this guy submits is graded by the same person, then John, yeah, you know what? You might have something, you may have something to go on there. But I don't know that information. We could say it's an inside job. We, we, we have to trust that they're going to do their due diligence again. They're going to have a, 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 an investigation at, the, at, at their facility to see what's going on. They've got cameras everywhere at that place. They have records as to who graded every single book. So hopefully they'll, they'll get to the bottom of this. Hopefully they will. Rob Bin says, interestingly, CGC recently started imaging graded books and included them in the online graders' notes. Maybe CGC was on the scam before it was discovered by the community. Yeah, I, you know what? That's just one good thing that they've done in the last little while. I'm glad they started doing that. And you know what? Did they? Was this a preemptive thing? Did they know this was kind of brewing? Don't know. Uh, Laura Thoss, they must be inspecting those books of that value. Really? Uh, you'd think so. You'd think so. I, again, I do believe if you go to the CGC website under reslabbing, maybe I'll go there right now and have a quick look while you guys are, because I'm pretty sure that if a book is over a certain value, they will not reslab the book. Let me just go to the CGC website really quick here. And I'll tell you right off the bat, uh, services and fees, reholder. Re Oh, no, they don't. Okay, no, you can do it. It says here, reholder, unlimited value. A high-value comic and a CGC holder is encapsulated in a new CGC holder. The greater, sorry, the grade assigned to the book should not change unless any damage occurred post-encapsulation, in which case the grade will be adjusted accordingly. To qualify, the book must be encapsulated in its original CGC holder. So there you go. I was wrong. I was under the impression that if a book was at a certain value, it had to be regraded. And you know what? Maybe that's what has to happen. If the book is over $1,000, it has to be, or maybe I would go even over $500. If the book's over $500, it must be regraded. It's not, and maybe a discount to regrade it because, you know, you're re-slabbing it after all. Something like that has to happen. Um. CGC is owned by a private equity firm, a.k.a. has lawyers in droves. Unless this turns into a class action, they'll use those lawyers to squash everyone that comes along individually. You're probably right. Sad enough. Jerry says, thanks, no problem. Lord Thoth gave uh, Jerry the Jitterbugs um, link right there to his YouTube channel. Check him out. It's a lot of fun, guys. It's a lot of fun. If you ever wondered you know, what it's like to, to, to wash a book, you know, to actually wash a book. I'm not talking about dry clean. I'm talking about washing a book, uh, removing tape from a book, uh, staple, repl all that kind of stuff. Jerry is playing around with all of these uh, different jobs. Check him out. A lot of fun. And he's fun to listen to as well. Jerry's got a great personality. He's a, he's not a, some, some of these guys on there are pretty uh, drab. Jerry's got a bit of a personality, so I do appreciate it. Uh, how you doing, Wayne? Good to see you, pal. I made one of those chats. That's right. Made one of these chats. Hail Wayne. Uh, Jason says, it's like Hulk Wayne won the old label that was missing the value. That's the one. CGC came out and said if the book was sent to them in the case and they found the problem, they would be on the hook. That they would be on the hook. Well, there you go. That's right, Wayne. Jerry does tend to play with a lot of Golden Age books, which is great to see. Um, uh, Kilted Corgi. This will cost CGC millions in lost earnings. Now's the time to have a new upcoming grading company. <sighs> if I if I had a dollar for a dollar for every time somebody said, Kevin, you should open a grading company. Yeah, right. No, thank you. No, thank you. It, it, it's it's that would be such a oh a daunt. Oh, I can't even imagine how daunting that would be. I'm too old. Too old. Look. If CGC were to say, Kevin, I want you to come into, come into Florida. I'm going to hire you. I'm going to pay you $250,000 a year. And we want I want you to make sure this operation is running smooth and all these mistakes stop happening. I would be into that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a shop manager at CGC. Bust some heads. Like, enough of that. Like, I, I as, as, as angry as I get with things, well, I don't get angry. My, my guys are good at my shop. 
you know, Charlo and Napur are fantastic. They do, they do, we, we all work together really well and uh, we try to do the very best job possible. So there's no issue with that. But I guess in a place like CGC, you have that many people working, it can be, uh, yeah, things things slip through the cracks, right? It happens. And that's that's a bad thing. Um, this is a perfect example of why we need competition. But the companies need to make money. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, guys. I don't understand. I still to this day don't understand why CBCS didn't put up more of a, a fight. Didn't, didn't come, you know, when Beckett took, I would have got rid of the name CBCS, first of all. I just call it Beckett grading. That's it. Go into the Beckett umbrella. It's Beckett, you know, Beckett grades cards. Beckett grades comics. Go down that road. Use the exact same style of label that's on a Beckett uh, card. Will be on the comic books, and um, and and just dump a pile of money into it and just kind of fight, fight CGC. I, I think they could have they could have gave a real run for their money, but instead it's just I I just seems like a, it seems like. A, just seems like a an afterthought to to Beckett's in a way. I don't know. Don't get it. Does Jerry remove mold? <clears throat> Jerry, are you still there? Do you remove mold? Because I don't like playing with that. Uh, Wayne, the fact that you all choose to send your books to the team that makes the rules is why the industry needs competition. Or hey, buy raw books. Just saying. Jerry says, "Thank you, Lord." Wayne says, grading is subjective by the book, not the grade. That is true. No problem, pal. No problem. Um, well, listen, guys. Oh, there you go. That hombre, go over and contact Jerry the Jitterbug. He plays with, likes to play with, could deal with mold. He's the one you want to deal with. I don't like playing with mold, personally. Um... But if Jerry wants to do it, jot down his number. All right, guys. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It was a nice uh, chat with you guys for the last hour or so. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I hope you enjoyed my list of top 10 or so books that I saw. I wouldn't say top books, but the most submitted books we saw in the last year. Remember, next Tuesday, I'll be back here again with uh, Moneyball Comics. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about this whole scandal. And we're also going to talk about solutions, what CGC can do, what any grading company could do to ensure that this tor this type of uh, fraud can, to be, can be prevented. Uh, to ensure it doesn't happen to your books or any or books you want to buy. So if you have any ideas, again, let me know in the comment section below. How would you, what do you think CG, CGC should do to help avoid this sort of scandal from ever happening again? Well, let me know in the comment section below if I like what you have to say. I'll bring it up next Tuesday uh, when I'm talking to Moneyball Comics, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Uh, if you're off, enjoy the time off. If you're going back to work, Keep that holiday spirit alive within. And if you're in the area on Saturday, come on by the shop. Lots of sales upstairs and down, 11 to 4. And if you have any books you want cleaned or pressed and submitted to, CG, submitted to CGC, uh, big 10% sale going on this week, only this week. Next sale won't be around probably until for, for quite some time. So take advantage of the 10% savings and get over to my website, www.thecomictalker.com. Fill out a submission form. I'll be happy to help you. All right, guys. Have a fantastic night. Take care. Bye for now. See ya.